Hi guys, Christy Cooper here, the Green Thumbed Reporter, and I cannot believe it is already February. We are getting so much beautiful food from the garden at the moment, but I'm gonna put this down because uh, I'm not so good at carrying things anymore. Part of the reason I can't believe it's February already is because that means I've only got one month to go until I start carrying this one in my arms. <laughs> That's also why I am a few days late to get this garden tour updated, but I can't wait to show you how everything is growing because summer veggies are in full swing and our fridge and our bench tops are just full of homegrown produce at the moment. It's been a pretty exciting time in our household over the last few weeks. Those of you who follow this channel will know I have two little kids who are getting bigger. My oldest just started school. He is now a preppy. My youngest just started kinder. Today is actually the first day ever, or at least in five years, that I've had both kids in care for an extended period of the day, uh, which gives me some free time. And that's not gonna last very long. So we'll try and enjoy it while we can. So what's in store today? I'm gonna give you a full tour of the garden as I always do. I am then going to go through all the things that you can plant in your garden right now, the best seeds and seedlings for the month of February if you are in Melbourne, Victoria or anywhere that's got a similar climate. Before we get going, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, that way you won't miss the next garden tour that is uploaded. And if you could, if you like this video, I'd love it if you could hit the like button too. That just gives this small channel a little bit of a boost. So what you can see up here are habanero chilies. They're growing really well. I think some of them should start changing color soon. Haven't picked or tried any of those yet. They should have a really good kick to them. Speaking of things with kick, I've got more chilies here that are all going black and then I believe should go red, but I haven't seen any of them going red yet. I reckon we might not be too far off. There are gonna be heaps of chilies in there. What we usually do if we have an abundance is freeze them and or dry them. And that way they can last you the rest of the year. You can see how luscious my cucumelon plant is going in my food cubes. There are so many cucumelons in there that I just can't keep up with them. <laughs> and they're getting really big too. So I've, I've told you before, the smaller they are, the nicer they are. They're a little bit tart by the, get, the time they get to that size. You just pull them off. Gosh, there's so many. They're really hard to spot too because they hide underneath the leaves. Hey, look. Conjoined twins. Last year we didn't get nearly as many fruit as this and the kids seem to really like them. This year they, they're producing so much fruit the kids are sick of them. <laughs> you can never win, can you? While well, my older bean plants are starting to look pretty sick and sad, these ones are doing great. So yummy like that straight off the vine. This is my weed tomato down here that I've spoken about before, which ended up being a Roma tomato. I'll pull all of them off when they're about that ripe. Prevents the bugs from getting to them. As soon as they start turning, I'll pull them off and they'll ripen up within oh, maximum three days inside, just sitting on the bench in a bowl. Hiding down here. Grab that one off too. Now my watermelons hiding behind here are a bit of a mixed bag. I've got some that are yellow like this one and the leaves around there don't look as healthy and I'm not quite as confident in those. Like here's another example of that. I suspect this one isn't going to ripen. That one, however, is starting to go green and these two here look just about ready. Now these are supposed to be baby watermelons. I find it so hard to know 
when they're ready. So what I'm actually gonna, they've been looking almost ready for a while. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pick one of those right now and I'll show you what's inside and we'll discover together. Okay, um, um, let's just give it a go. I may end up regretting this, but let's see. Oh, yep, that's not ready yet. My green apple cucumbers down the back here is another one I just haven't been able to keep up with. I haven't been able to keep up with picking them. I haven't been able to keep up with eating them. There's just been so many. That one's going yellow, which I've since learned is a sign that they have over ripened on the vine. So they might even have to go straight to the compost. And again, I blame this munchkin because it's just slowing me down. And I'm just tired. Ooh, they're quite prickly. If anyone's got any good recipes for cucumbers, my mother-in-law does a great pickled cucumber, but these are just the wrong shape for pickling. It's even the bending over is getting harder. Poor old back. Now this feels like a big waste, but I'm actually going to put these straight in the compost because they're overripe and uh, oh, just seen a tomato's been eaten by a bird. Oof. I didn't have a huge amount of success with cucumbers last year. So this year I stuck in a few extra seedlings, maybe three extra seedlings. <laughs> Yeah, mm. more than I can manage. Now my tomatoes were going gangbusters early in the season and we have harvested so many beautiful tomatoes. We've really enjoyed them. But interestingly, they've really slowed down. So you can see there's very few actual ripe red ones on here and those that are growing they're just a bit smaller. Over here on the other side, I've trimmed back this tomato bush a lot because it was looking a bit diseased. Again, I just haven't given it the TLC that um, I did earlier in the season. There's still lots of fruit on there and this, this one has been really yummy. The birds think so too. Cheeky rat bags. Um, but yeah, interestingly, the tomatoes got going very early and they, I don't think it'll be a long tomato season for us. Lots in there that will ripen up, but a lot of them are getting bugs in them. On the other side of this bed, you'll see my capsicums are really starting to come good. Some big ones in there. There's size comparison. There's my hand. Beautiful big capsicums growing over there too. And a smaller capsicum plant in here. Look at this. There's so many of them down there. I don't know what this plant's doing. It almost, this plant almost looks like it's a vine, which doesn't make sense for capsicums. But uh, yeah, they're beautiful. So I could pick and eat those now or I could leave them to color up, which is what I'm currently planning to do. So they just taste a bit sweeter and the kids like them more when they're red or yellow. Yeah, heaps more in there. Beautiful. What's hiding under here? Those habanero chilies that I showed you earlier. Sorry, just heaps and heaps of them growing. Hiding down the back here, we've got those purple carrots which I've sort of neglected a bit. Let's see. Oh, that's pretty good. I'd say they're probably ready to start enjoying. I need to move that pot down so they're accessible to my youngest, who loves these. But um, I'm not very good at carrying things at the moment, so pots aren't really getting moved, thanks to this guy. Little but um, they'll still be a good snack. 
Nice. But underneath here are some newer things that I planted. So I stuck in a few seeds for purple beans just because I was really enjoying the other ones. And they're now starting to produce beans. Plant and my basil's doing really well. We've been loving the basil. I've probably mentioned this before, but if you see it starting to go to seed, I just cut those bits off and the rest seems to just keep growing. A few lettuces hiding in amongst there. My parsley growing really nicely in here. A little bit going to seed there, but the rest is fine. And hiding under there is spring onion, which looks squashed, but still tastes great. And these pots down here, I've got some lettuces. Uh, the lettuces haven't been growing at a, as quick as I've been eating them. I think the hot weather has been too hot for lettuces. My coriander here, again, has been trying to bolt. I think it's too hot for coriander too, but I'm gonna try again in a different location for them. Uh, and two newer, younger chili plants here. So if you have a closer look, you can see quite a few green chilies on there. These should be ultra spicy too, these ones. Hiding in here, I've got a whole lot of green beans, which have been super yummy. They look a little bit healthier than my purple bean plants. Who knows why? But I do think I'll plant another round of those today or in the next few days. Still plenty more warm weather to come. And behind there, we have the leaning tower of tomatoes. It's just gotten too big for a really crummy steak that I've put in. I should have put in a better steak. These are yummy. Beautiful on toast or in pastas or just eaten like that. My strawberries definitely need to be netted because something else gets to them long before I do. But here's something that's interesting. They've all started to produce these suckers now. And I'd heard a lot about suckers, but I hadn't actually experienced real suckers before. So what I've been doing is I've been trailing them off into this bed here to try and get them to sort of spread through here. That then sits on the soil and will grow its own roots and develop a totally separate plant. I had a whole lot of rocket growing here and it was getting absolutely smashed by the cabbage white butterflies. So I just cut the whole lot off. Interestingly, it is growing back because I, I literally cut it right back down to the roots and now it's growing back. I would be thrilled if that grew back into a healthy plant, but there's still so many butterflies around at the moment. When it comes to my lettuces, the best lettuces are still the ones that are protected by netting. I think because they're not getting as much harsh sun on those really hot days that we've had. That being said, we're eating a lot of lettuce at the moment, so I can't actually grow it quickly enough to keep up with how much we're eating. So. I actually said to my husband yesterday, let's press pause on eating lettuce just for a few days so that we can give these guys a chance to grow. Alrighty, so let us talk about what you could be planting right now. There are lots of seeds that you could be planting. I'll go through those in a minute. There are also seedlings. These I have just received in the mail from QP Seedlings. They're usually my go-to now if I want to buy seedlings because they're just so much stronger than a lot of the others. These are all rocket. I'll end up putting this rocket in uh, the veggie pod because I can cover it over and protect it from the butterflies. I've got some more beautiful red butter lettuce I think this is. Just because my other lettuces have not coped well in the heat so we want to get some more going. Oh bok choy. I mean we have to really protect these from the butterflies as well so I'll probably also put these in my veggie pod. We're really looking forward to the bok choy. More lettuce. You can never have too much lettuce. And dill. My husband's been enjoying cooking with dill recently so I've got a few dill plants to stick in so we've always got fresh dill in the garden. Now let me take you through all the different options of seeds that you could potentially be planting. These two are summer veggies, obviously, but it's not too late to stick some bean seeds in because they do grow, grow so quickly and you're likely to still 
get some produce before it gets too cold. Over here, these are sort of your any time of the year type of things that you can plant. Carrots, of course, bunch of different lettuce options. Do check the back of the seed packet though, because some of them do do better in cooler months than others. Silver beet, you could plant now. Things like leek, beetroot, that goes in with your root veggies. They'll do quite well now too. Uh, and similar to the leek family, we've got spring onion here, fennel, and that goes up with the carrot family there. So those are the sorts of things that you could be sticking in as seeds right now if you wanted to. Moving down here, it's not too early to start thinking about your broccolis and your kales and your rockets um, and things like that. But the white cabbage butterfly is out with a vengeance at the moment. There is a plague of white cabbage butterflies. I'm gonna show you some footage that I filmed just a few days ago. I was working actually on a news report for Seven on the cabbage white butterfly plague. This is footage that I shot in Werribee at a broccoli farm there. Now the cabbage white butterflies, as we've talked about before, they lay their eggs, the eggs turn into caterpillars, they can absolutely decimate your plants. And these are the plants that they love the most, or some of them. So you can get these going now if you like, but I would get them done either inside or under some very, very secure netting. I always thought that broccoli was sort of a, a winter kind of Thing to grow but the farmers I was talking to on the weekend said no nope, broccoli is all year round here in Melbourne it's just because of those um, butterflies and the caterpillars that drive you bonkers kale we've got brocco flower and red cabbage so just a few other options that fall into that same brassica family if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and go and check out some of my other videos you will find a similar video for every month of the year enjoy bye